Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Rusty Beauties Restorations and this should be, this time for real, the last episode about this 1975 1500 Spitfire and in the last few episodes we replaced the original harness with advanced out wire wiring harness so that went well and there were just a few little bugs that we needed to solve with the original equipment that wasn't working very well so when we were done with the electrical we also did some mechanical work on the car and in the last episode we even test drove it and it drove well but there are few little things that we need to finish in this episode so let's get crackalacking on those Right, she drives fantastic, stops fantastic, but the thing is, she idles super high, look at that. Look at but that. But the problem is I can't turn the idle down, it is just not going, so I'm gonna have to deal with that. All right, so the idle screw here, where is it? This is the idle screw here. It's loosened as far as it can go. So it's not holding the throttle open. You know, there's a gap here. I don't know if you see. Um, the choke is off. It can't go anywhere more than that. So I think what happens here is the throttle cable so this is the cable for the throttle and I think that's what's not allowing to go back because that's that's when you hit the pedal and when you let go I think it needs to let go more problem is it's loosened as far as it can go here and I'm assuming that on the pedal there's adjustment but before I go there I'm gonna just remove this nut from here I mean I'm gonna loosen it all the way so it's gonna come on the cable and then probably yeah then we can take this out and see how it's gonna idle like that oh, I think it let go a little bit more now let's start it again It still runs super high so I guess we're gonna have to take the carb off we don't have other choice maybe the throttle plate is uh, stuck open somehow or it's bent or I don't know we'll see if it closes properly anyway let me take the air cleaner off and remove some of these hoses okay the air cleaner is off and I'm wondering to, whether we can see the Throttle plate from here, yeah, we can see it, but whether it's bent or anything, I don't know. Um, let's remove the air valve, and that's gonna show us a little bit more, I guess. The air valve is out, and first of all, this needle looks bent, and second, I don't know if you see this mark here but it is pretty worn right here. I don't know how well you can see this in camera, but there's a nail catcher. So I'll see if I have another needle, even if it's used. The jet, I don't know. Let me turn the light on. So the jet, for sure the jet is worn as well in this case, let me zoom in. Mm -hmm. And the uh, throttle inside looks like it's closed properly. It's closing all the, all the way. So that's good. So we're not gonna take the whole carburetor out. 
the diaphragm I check the diaphragm and it doesn't have any ribs on it so so maybe we can take this out and see if the diaphragm inside is still in one piece because that might cause high idle if it leaks and bypasses the throttle constantly I'm pretty sure that's the problem but the needle also is a problem so let me take this out as well throttle bypass I think it's called okay so this throttle bypass is out look it has this is a new gasket I think the whole carburetor has been rebuilt all the gaskets look relatively new anyway um, so what this does this figure eight meets two holes there on the carburetor and these holes on the carburetor one is before the throttle plate the other one is after the throttle plate it bypasses the throttle plate which is like that however you can close it with this thing inside this is like a plunger that goes in and out and you can close with this screw on some carburetors this is not adjustable uh, it is sealed on some of them so with this screw you adjust the position of this um, plunger inside yeah as I'm turning it you see the plunger comes out and now it's closed completely the thing is though this was moving freely we need to open it I think there is a spring inside that's either missing or it's broken I didn't want to open it because if this gasket here goes bad then we're in trouble because I don't have it but I'll turn it up. I'll take it apart okay Ooh, it actually split there's no spring so this is the plunger that moves in and out and this is a diaphragm which eh, looks good because how it works is with vacuum so this little hole here meets another vacuum port there on the carburetor and when there's vacuum here that pulls this diaphragm back, back so it creates vacuum here in this chamber behind the diaphragm and it pulls it back and when it pulls it back the plunger opens the passage between the two holes when there's no vacuum something needs to push it back to close I have some carburetor parts so let me go check well ain't we lucky we have this one that's taken apart and it still has the spring in it you see and we have even a needle I don't know if that needle is good or if it is the same because this is Stromberg I don't know 175 I believe anyway we will see if this needle is gonna work for us but uh, yeah this is the spring here you can see this is taken apart I don't know where the diaphragm is probably I took it for my GT6 <laughs> yeah because I worked on my GT6 carburetors here where are they they're here oh my god You see, this one on my GT6 is sealed. You don't have you don't have access to that. So if you want to adjust it, you have to take it apart, I guess. Anyway, we're gonna steal those and let's see. Okay, that's better. So somebody rebuilt it, but they lost the spring. Okay, so now this is always closed, but if we push on it, you see, if we push on it, it opens. I mean, now the vacuum can pull it back, and with this screw, we can adjust how much it can open the vacuum. So we have to remember that the tighter this screw is, the more it's going to open. The looser this screw is, the less it's going to open because eventually it's going to keep it too close okay so we can adjust that later but without the spring this thing was always open even when there was no vacuum in that hole the plunger could go back 
and remain open. So now that's gonna work. I'm sure that was our problem. So let's put it back on. And okay, so it is assembled now. We put back the air pump or the air valve with the needle. We filled it up with uh, oil. I use automatic transmission fluid. That's what I like. And now it goes up and down smooth. I'm surprised because the needle really looked bent and when the needle is bent it just gets jammed in the jet but apparently that's not the case here so let's see how she's gonna run now now it's even too low Oh, look, that's the same car there. <laughs> All right, it's another day. And uh, I don't remember, to be honest, where we stopped the other day. Where we stopped filming, I mean, I know what I've done. <laughs> I just don't remember what I filmed, what I didn't. So we did a little bit of tuning up on the curb and I test drove it and she drives pretty well. I also touched a little bit the timing. So now she drives, she stops and all that good stuff. So this morning I already came and assembled the rest of the dash and this is interesting here. This is a homemade thing, that's how Rob and the kids bought the car. The previous owner installed this aftermarket panel there where they put the radio. But with that the interior is done. Uh, it doesn't have an A-frame, H-frame or whatever you want to call it under the, like a, the dash support. So I guess that never came with the car when Rob bought it. Anyways, there's one more thing that we need to do before we call this project done, and that's the soft top. So this is obviously a brand new soft top that the previous owner installed, but for whatever reason, the plastic here, the, key, the clear vinyl here is all ripped on both sides. So, I have a way of replacing that. It's not gonna look great because we're gonna have to stitch it. I can't vulcanize it like how it is done here, you see. It's been literally glued on top, like hot pressed. Okay, I guess that's called vulcanize, vul vulcanizing. I don't know what the name of the process is, but all I can do is stitch new one. So I got new clear vinyl. 30 gauge, I think, which corresponds to 30 thou of an inch thickness. So we're gonna have to take this off the frame though, because we're not gonna be able to put it on the machine, on the sewing machine. So here we have um, snap buttons, which is great. And here, here oh, we also have snap buttons, but they have been riveted in. So, this we're gonna remove so we can remove this piece of metal from here good thing nothing is glued so it's gonna be easy and here it is the same thing so uh everything is riveted no glue so i'm afraid that this is gonna rip but maybe not maybe it's gonna work and the only other thing that holds it to the frame is here this hog ring on this side and there's another one here so we're gonna remove everything and then we're gonna be able to do the stitching here. Okay, so the top is off the frame. And we're gonna cut this to use it as a pattern because we need a pattern for that, right? So let's cut it out. So it overlaps here by, what is this, about half an inch but I'm not gonna try to unglue it or anything. We're just gonna leave it there and we're gonna cut it where the vinyl ends. And then when we are using this as a pattern, we're gonna know that we have to extend it by half an inch. We can make it even bigger and trim it after we stitch it.
Now, it's pretty obvious by the shape how it goes and where it goes, but just in case, we're gonna mark it. This is up, and this is the driver's side. Driver's side, in. So I'm gonna cut the other one as well now. It's hot today, it's September 3rd. And just two days ago, it was super cold outside. It was 14 Celsius all day or 16, something like that. It was pretty cold. Today is about 30 again. Okay. Luckily, the big thing is in one piece. I think they ripped it with the frame when they folded it. That's when they ripped it. So now the new one, we're gonna overlap this and we're gonna stitch it inside. We're gonna make two stitches next to each other. So now we're cutting it half an inch more because it needs to overlap the old one, right? That's one. Let's stitch this one and then we're gonna do the other one. It's not gonna look great, but to be honest, that's how it is on my own Spitfire for years now. And it is, it is what it is, you know? <laughs> okay, so this is my driver's side and this is up but this this is our in so that's how it goes okay now we can get rid of the old one okay once the needle is inside it's not gonna go anywhere now we can start. It is attached now, so now we're gonna put a second stitch right next to this one. So we're gonna have two one next to each other. This one should be easier in theory. Okay, doesn't look too bad. Now we have to trim a little bit here where we have extra material, but in general, it looks okay. If we make it look everywhere like this, then it's fine. It's just not good, it's stitched, but it looks good, doesn't it? There you go. Now it's trimmed. And I'm gonna do the other side on my own and then we'll see how we're gonna install it on the car. Well, that car is still there. <laughs> okay. The other side is installed as well. So now we are ready to put it back on the frame and on the car. Okay, so now we can put this piece of metal back inside and it was riveted here, if you remember. 
Well, of course you remember, for you it was like two minutes ago. This was riveted like this. Um, I have a special tool that I bought from uh, JT Outdoor Materials or something like that it was called. I've, I'll find a link and I'll put it here. With this special tool, we can actually use the proper stuff. So this is how you put the, this is the back of the male snap button. And with this special tool, we're gonna crimp it. So you see, this is the regular one. And this is a longer one because it goes through a metal, but I'm gonna try the regular one first because I think this metal is pretty thin and it's gonna work better this way. Mm, not sure that's gonna be long enough. Maybe. Let me try. <sighs> yeah, actually it is perfect. Okay, so we're gonna use the short ones because the long ones, if the, if the metal is not too thick, the long ones create uh too much bulk here inside and then you can't snap a button on top so we're gonna use the short ones Okay, so now that it is, the frame is still off, we have the opportunity to attach this easily here. So the car came here with the hard top, but Rob asked me if I can put the soft top on instead. So that's what we're doing now. Okay, so now let's install the frame. Okay, the frame is installed and it's latched and doesn't interfere with the glass. So I guess that's how it is. Let's put the top on and I think here in the front I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rivet it this time, I'm gonna glue it. Because I've never seen how it was fitting before, but I'm sure the rivets were pulling only in certain spots and the other spots were loose because nothing was glued. Normally, it is glued always here in the front. So let's flip it over and see how it fits in the first place. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was loose here before. This is where it was folded, right? And look at that, I'm sure it was. So now we're gonna spray glue and then we're gonna glue it nice and tight. Today is a pretty hot day, so probably the vinyl is a little bit looser than not what normally it is, so we're not gonna pull way too tight, because when it's colder, it's gonna shrink a little bit and then it's gonna be uh, impossible to put up. So we're just gonna pull it a little bit. So let's spray glue right here on this edge and inside as well, on the same edge, and a little bit here, and then we're gonna glue it. Okay, we're gonna use this uh, Gorilla glue, Gorilla spray adhesive heavy duty, because I used to buy a professional glue that uh, we used in the limousines as well, and that was fantastic. However, it's expensive and it comes in jugs, so you have to put it in a spray gun and spray it, and if you don't use it very often, it dries, and then you have to clean the gun every time and all that. So since I'm not using it that often, I'm just wasting it. So I started buying this one, 3M Super 77, and it worked well, but recently David Sheftash bought this for the TR4 that we were working on, and it is actually working much better than the 3M. So that's what I'm gonna start buying from now onward. So we're gonna spray a little. 
Yes. And this top, I'm pretty sure this top is missing. There must be a channel here and a seal. I've never done a Spitfire one. I've done TR6, but they are very similar. And there must be a channel here and a gasket that goes very hard there. But here it is missing. So we're gonna put the vinyl for now, but we'll for sure that's not gonna seal. So I'm gonna tell Rob for next summer, if he wants to use it, he needs to get the channel and the gasket. So this glue needs to be left to dry anyways, to, to become tacky. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna spray also on the outside. And now we can close it because that's how we're gonna glue the vinyl to it. And we're gonna let it dry. I'm gonna leave it here to dry for now and I'm gonna spray glue on the vinyl too. Now we wanna spray glue on this thing as well, this thong, and then on both sides because that goes first and then this wraps around it. So this needs to glue to this. So I'm gonna spray both sides of this. And then here, this is the line where it was folded, but now we're gonna pull a little bit more. So we're gonna spray all the way to here somewhere. Wow, well, had just enough glue for the job. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna let everything dry for like three, four minutes. And now, the glue is pretty well dried here. Like it's tacking, that's what we wanted. So let's flip it around and we're gonna have to center it somehow. You have to like, have to make sure that it is centered. And we're gonna pull and glue it down. Sorry about the kids in the background yelling. That's how they play. Okay, let's put those buttons on. Okay, well. I'm afraid to pull much harder. Now that the glue is still tacky, we cannot do it and do it again. But I'm afraid to do, to make it much tighter because like I said, it's a pretty hot day today. It's about 30 degrees Celsius. And on a cold day, the vinyl is gonna be much tighter and it's gonna be hard to install. So I think that's how we're gonna leave it. It's not super tight here, but there's also nothing holding it here to the frame. On the TR6, there's Velcro here and on the frame, and you can pull here and tuck it to the frame. Here, I don't know. Okay, now we can open it and flip this edge. Now, now here at the end, like I said, this piece goes first and then this goes over it and and now this is where the channel gets riveted over the vinyl and it holds it down. I'm sure the glue is not gonna let go but the channel is there also for that reason. First of all, it holds the gasket that seals or the seal that seals the front lip, but also it holds the vinyl down better. Okay, and now we can put this strap around here where it was. And for the first time in, I don't know, probably five years since my friend Eugene gave me this gun, <laughs> 
this is a hog rig gun, ho hog ring gun. So for the first time, I'm gonna try to use it. Never used it before. Haha, <laughs> it actually works. Let's put one on the other side as well. Good. And that's it, unfortunately. We have to leave it without a seal. But let's see how hard it is going to be to install now. not that hard. Let's lift the windows. So anyways I think that was the last job that we did on this car. I think the glass looks great. It's like new. Anyway, I think that's where we're gonna end our series about this beautiful car. Uh, tomorrow, Rob is coming to pick it up. So he's gonna enjoy it with one of his twins because unfortunately the other one, whose name is Simon, by the way, because I forgot his name the first <laughs> in the first episode. So there's Simon and Declan. So Simon went to university already. So unfortunately, he's not going to have the fun to drive it this season. So Rob is coming to pick it up tomorrow and he's going to enjoy it for, with Declan. And then I'm hoping in two weeks from today, exactly two weeks from today, is British Car Day, the biggest British car show in North America, organized by Toronto Triumph Club, which I'm a member of. And I'm going to be there the day before to set up the field. And then the day after, which is September 17th, uh, is, is going to be the official show. So you are invited. If you want to see lots of British rusty beauties or de-rusted beauties, you can come and see them in Bronte Creek. We'll just look up, uh, just look up the British car day and it's going to come up September 17th, 2023. And there's going to be lots of my babies there, the ones that I worked on, <laughs> including this one. So anyways, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, sharing, supporting the channel. Thanks for sticking around for all the episodes on, on this beauty. So it's all really, really appreciated, guys. So thank you again. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.